Hi Church, how are you today? My name is Stephen, I'm part of Central Campus, I run the car park team there and I'm also involved in small groups in the Oldham area. Today's devotion, I want to share a little bit about Moses. Now we first start reading about Moses in Exodus 2, about the dramatic birth and how he's um, hidden away in the um, River Nile in a basket, found by Pharaoh's daughter and she raises him as his own son. For 40 years he's raised in the royal family, Best education, best opportunities, best support, encouragement, people around him to help him every step of the way. You know, for many people, you would have looked at Moses and thought he had it made. He had everything he needed. Life couldn't get any better. But for some reason, Moses didn't feel as though he fitted in with that lifestyle. In fact, one day he's out walking and he sees an Egyptian threatening um, an Israelite. He steps in and ends up killing that Egyptian. The next day, he's back out walking again, and this time two Israelites arguing with each other, and again Moses tries to intervene. But the reaction to the Israelites stuns him. They say to him, who are you to intervene? You're not our judge, you're not our ruler, are you going to kill us just like you killed that Egyptian? Moses started to worry. Pharaoh found out, Pharaoh came after him, ready to kill him. Moses now had no other choice but to flee Egypt. He'd now turned his back on his upbringing, he now was rejected by his own people, Moses must have felt at that time that he had lost everything. And for the next 40 years, he lives in the desert as a shepherd. His life couldn't be any further from the first 40 years to the next 40 years. But you see, God hadn't finished with Moses. Um, God had still had big plans for him. And then another one day when he's out doing his everyday tasks, Looking after the sheep, God starts to intervene. There he sees a burning bush and God speaks to him from the midst of it. And he gives him two clear instructions. I want you to go back to Egypt. I want you to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And I want you to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Then Moses' reaction was not what you'd have thought from a great leader. He comes up with excuse after excuse. But God, why are you asking me? I can't do this. I don't know what to say. They're not going to listen to me. What well, surely there must be somebody else. Despite God's best intentions, despite God's reassurances, Pharaoh listen, won't listen to you. The Israelites will. Moses still didn't believe God. God tried to reassure him with more signs and wonders. This is what will make them believe. But again, Moses didn't think he could do it. Have you ever been asked to do something where your first thought was, I can't do that. Surely, God, there must be people better than me to be able to do it. What Moses needed was somebody to get alongside him and give him that little bit of encouragement and a little bit of support. I remember when I first became a Christian, there was those three friends that I had that really helped me um, to, to grow in my faith. Andrew, Brian and Paul. Now, these were three friends that I looked up to. Three friends that I was um, gaining encouragement from, that, that was there to help me to grow in my faith and grow in the giftings um, and that God had for me and to find that purpose in life. Three people that I know, um, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here today. And at each stage of my life, God has put the right people at the right time to help me to progress on into the plans that God has for us. Aaron was the person that God was going to bring along to help Moses. Aaron was the sort of person that Moses could look up to. It was his older brother, somebody that was there to help him, to encourage him and to give him that confidence to take the next few steps. We all need people in our lives that can be like that. Pastor Mark shared last month and, and the beginning of the series at the table about having people in our life that could um, help us to see things in a different perspective. People of resilience that could help us to get through the difficult times. He talked about people of purpose that could help us discover the purposes that God had in our lives. And he talked about people that we can share memories with. For me, Andrew, Paul, Brian were those people amongst many others. For Moses, Aaron was that person. And as you continue to read in, in Exodus, as we go through 4, 5, 6, we read about how Moses grew in the callings that God had for him. See, God said, first of all, I'll speak to you, you speak to Aaron, Aaron will speak to the people. Eventually, Moses got to the point where he didn't need Aaron to do that task. He could do it directly himself. Moses didn't feel as though he fitted in because he saw things through his own eyes. But he needed to see things through a different perspective. He needed somebody to help to build his confidence and, and, and equip him in the things that he had. 
I wonder who you've got in your life that's there to help you to grow confidence, to grow in your ability to see things the way God sees things and to be able to step out in the purposes of your life. Maybe you've got friends or family, maybe people in your small groups or on teams, but get people around you, the right people that can help you to step out. Other side of that is, who are you there to encourage or support other people? Church, I hope you have a great summer. Um, I really hope you're involved in small groups or teams. If not, then get involved in them. Um, I hope you've had a great um, dinner party or, or connections, social times in small groups. If not, again, speak to your small group leaders and find out when they're happening. Socials happen throughout the summertime. Um, it's a great chance for us as individuals, as small groups, as a church to get connected with people, to get the right people at our table that they can there to be there to help us in the things that God has for us but also that we can be used to help other people. Church, let me encourage you, whatever you do this summer, get connected, get the right people at your table and let's grow in the purposes of God. God bless you, church. We love you all and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye now.